Hi everyone. <coughs> um, I was surprised today. The postman rang the doorbell and had a parcel for me. And this is what it is from Bulgaria. It'll be a quick video um, to show the main points. It hasn't been cleaned up or anything. It's as seen and more or less straight out the box that I got it in. Lucky nothing was broken because the handset and the actual body of the phone was in contact so any knocks I would have thought could have caused damage but I was lucky. The box was rather flimsy as well. It was um, wrapped partly in bubble, uh, bubble wrap so I got away with it. Anyhow I didn't really know what the phone was but looking up uh, rotary phone forums under Romania not Romania Bulgaria I always get those two confused Bulgaria one of these phones turned up or one very very similar and um, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Another entry did show this self same phone but unfortunately the one they had got damaged in transit. But anyhow there we are this is the phone. Um, I'll show you what's on the back because one person wanted a diagram. I said well if you look up my YouTube I'll put a diagram on there of that phone so I hold it on there a little while hopefully the diagram will be seen and hopefully used while we're talking about the base I'm going to turn it over and show you what's on the other side there's a metal plate there showing 19 I think that's 64 is number T64 whether that refers to the model I don't know I think it does um, there's the base in full held in by two uncaptivated screws so if you have one of these and take it off, be very careful. The screws are not, no, it's three captives. Three screws. One, two, three. They're non captive. Well, my ones weren't captive. Whether they were originally, I don't know. But anyhow, there's the diagram. The last look at the diagram. We'll have a look at the phone itself. Um, as far as I make out, everything's correct. There's the handset with the, um, the typical handset for this type, possibly based on a German design. I don't know. It looks rather Germany to me. Quite a heavy handset made of Bakelite. I haven't even tried it out, so. It might work, it may not. I see no reason why it shouldn't work. Now I'm going to show you the innards. Have to be careful here because the wires to the dial are very, very short. I'll turn it round and hopefully I don't want to do any damage. So I'll turn it round and we'll have a little look at the dial. There's the dial, typical I call it a European dial. Um, if I can show it working. You've got your little wheel there which, which causes the impulse springs to make and break. It's possible that this one gives two pulses but actually sends 
one. Yes, it does. Oh, no, it does more than that. It's either two or three poles it sends, but it'll only send one. So if you dial one, it might actually make out it's sending three pulses or two pulses but under the control of this little spring in there you'll only send one this idea we think is to make sure this the speed the dial is up to speed and the other spring is the this one here is the off normal you've got a normal governor there on the side so all in all it's quite a strong it looks quite a well made dial not one of these plastic jobs it doesn't look plastic anyhow um, anyway let's have a look inside you've got your terminations there um, as far as I know it's wired up correctly the line cord is on this first three that's the line called you can check this out with the uh, the diagram or, or schematic and the other cord when I can find it goes to Worst thing being so close, these um, it looks like it goes to the um, handset, goes to these three in there. But check it out with the diagram because it will show you correctly where it is. Uh, the rest of it, you've got the a little knurled button there that alters the sound or the uh, it turns the bell off. You've got your normal bell with two gongs. Make sure they're adjusted right so they just ting without the hammer resting on the gong. This one was out of adjustment but you expect that. It's several years old. You've got two capacitors. I don't know if these are any good. Um, <clears throat> They, they may not be any good now, but if not, they can easily be obtained from uh, online's the best place. You go to Maplin's, they never have the blooming things in stock. Um, so if you get them online, you'll definitely get them. You've got your induction coil there. Uh, you've got a little component attached to the induction coil I think that could be an anti-clicking an anti-click device on the receiver it does show one on the diagram you know, what was on the base of that yeah turn it over and you've got your cradle springs and the other side of, of the terminals not really much shown a resistor there nothing else um, I was going to show something else I can't, I can't remember what it was now but anyhow this fits in neatly on captive screws well two are two are captive those two there and the other screw is is underneath where the gong is so where the the um, hammer or the clapper is on the dial so be careful as you screw those in they are yeah see they've They're metal. The inserts in the case are actually metal, but the base is on plastic, so or, or bakelite. So obviously, 
take care when you screw them in. Don't get them cross threaded if you can possibly help it. Turn this front back up. I know it's a bit skew with at the moment. There's the front of the dial giving letters as well as numbers. That looks like a button in the front. That's actually a dummy. It, it, it doesn't do anything. It's just they seem to be on these phones. They possibly made one version that did have an earth button but this one doesn't have it. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a dummy. Here's the back of the phone. Sorry I haven't shown it all screwed up and going but you know me I tend to like to show more than just the outline of the phone. I like to show what happens inside. I haven't opened the hand set up but I think the normal two components will be found and they'll probably be the same. So I've omitted that part. We've got a curly cord in good nick and the line cord is quite thick. It's quite a thick cord ending in three colours yellow, brown and white. I've yet to sort out which one goes where. But with our good friend the diagram, I'm going to put it up again because I know the diagram is so important if you have one of these phones and you open it up and all you get is where the diagram was and can't use it. So there is the diagram. I can't point to anything but you can see there's a strap between those two two connections there so that'll be one of the lines which would go through the bell when it rings through the capacitor out on the other line your um, dial off normals would be the contact there which I'm showing change over and that changes over so you connect your pulse contacts virtually directly across the line. There's a capacitor there which looks like that is used in conjunction with the actual transmission or the anti-side tone coils. They're the coils shown in black. That little device there is the device to prevent clicking on the receiver. This component K is the cradle contact as you put the handset back and take it off these will operate called K in this, this case. Anyhow, you're probably fed up with my voice rabbiting on. There's the TA64 again on the diagram. I will try and upload this and get it online so you can all have a good look at this. I'm well pleased and I'll say we will see if it works. So Thanks again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please leave any comments and I do thank you for watching and taking this in. I hope I haven't driven you all to sleep. Thanks again. Thank you.